Hello, welcome back to The Good, The Bad and The Stupid. It's Monday the 14th of October. Hope you've had a good weekend. Very wet, so it was where I was and where you was probably because it's wet everywhere. But we can't complain too much because of uh, the situation in Japan over the weekend was a lot wetter and a lot windier than uh, we're getting over here. So count your blessings, but um, it's still made a lot of things very difficult over the weekend for me uh, and today to be honest with you I'm doing this podcast late today because for some reason I decided to help somebody move a grand piano mistake of the day in the belting down of rain um, it was just an absolute nightmare to uh, negotiate good job he knew what he was doing I was just there to uh, to take the weight if it fell over and collapsed on me but um, anyway we got it done it took about two and a half hours <clears throat> and it was uh, it was belting down the rain all day. Two inches of rain, I think, has fell today. So um, yeah, so we're getting on a little bit late. But um, I was going to say I didn't get to see the Joker at the weekend. I said I was going to go and watch, try and go and watch the the Joker, the film, and um, I didn't actually go. I nearly did. I, I checked out the <clears throat> what's it called, the tickets online, and I saw that there was only four left at the time that I could have gone to go and watch it. And uh, I thought to myself, that is just too packed for me to uh, to put up with um, other people's munches and uh, other people's like noises and kind of um, distractions of the, uh, you know, there's thousands of, I don't know how many seats are in there, but there's hundreds of people there who are gonna piss me off. So I decided to give it a miss and probably try and go during the week maybe. Or unless I get too many more, um, too much more information about the film from people on bloody Facebook, they're constantly updating the, all the people who've been to see the film. They're all giving their opinions on it, aren't they? So I'm trying to avoid it all, so I don't know what the hell's going on. So uh, um, I might have to uh, shut down Facebook until I've actually been to see the film. Otherwise, it'll get to the point where. Too many people have seen it, and it, like Game of Thrones, I've not watched it because everyone keeps going on about it, and it puts me off, so um, I guess I'm a bit weird like that. But uh, uh, there's another good film coming out as well, The Irishman, <clears throat> the De Niro Scorsese film uh, with Joe Pesci. That's been given five stars, so I really want to go see that as well. That one's going to be packed, and that one, guess how long that's on for? Three and a half hours. Three and a half hours, I'll be taken out of there in a straight jacket, most likely, if I had to listen to people crunching nacho, nachos and slurping bloody coke and getting up to go to the toilet for three and a half hours. Oh, it would just be an absolute nightmare. You can't take me to the cinema, I'll tell you. Uh, I have to go on a Monday morning, special screening, Wayne only, or, uh, you know, or what's it called? A congregation of just people who have got the same problem you know same people who go to the cinema on this special time are the same people who can't stand other people fucking crunching on Maltesers and jelly babies and all that shit um yeah that's a good idea actually let's prompt this let's well let's work on that one we're gonna fucking mention that one to the audience see if we can get that one on the go um, anyway, so that film's coming out. That'd be good. Joe Pesci in any films uh, is good, isn't it? Even from from uh, Goodfellas to uh, what was that character he did in Le uh, Lethal Weapon? Leo Getz. Is that? I've, I was going to try and do an impression then, but it'll come out shit, and I'll have to cancel and re re rewind this bloody video. So I'm not going to do it. If you can do a good Leo Getz uh, impression, then uh, then do it yourself, because I'm not going to do it, because I'm going to have to. Uh, make myself look stupid um what's it called gary glitter has been has been lose is going to lose ro royalties from the use of one of his songs that's been used in the new joker film why they would use a gary glitter film in it i don't know a, a gary glitter song in it i don't know but it's weird eh, i suppose because you know the song rock and roll is quite a uh it was a popular song wasn't it back then but because is it is it of the time? Was the film set in the seventies? I'm not sure. But anyway, you think you wouldn't use a Gary Glitter song to save all the hassle and all the sort of any kind of bad publicity? I'm sure there's plenty of other good songs you could have used from the seventies and not bring uh, give Gary Glitter any uh, any fucking um, what's it called? 
any glory in in any kind of shape or form. Um, Jamie Vardy has severed tie, social media ties ties with Wayne Rooney in a deliberate snub. Pals said last night, so he's basically uh, deleted him off Instagram. I always wonder that. So, how do people know when you've deleted somebody else off Instagram? Because they probably follow thousands, un unfollow thousands, uh, follow thousands, have thousands follow them. How does somebody know when you have deleted somebody else? It's, it's very like, like um, somebody must be like spying on your account constantly to see who's coming on and who's going off. It's really weird. So, it's put me off deleting people off mine. That's the reason I want to know, um, without people actually knowing that I've deleted them. I'm only joking, I've got about fucking 10 followers, but for future reference, when I'm popular, you know. Um, but yeah, so he's deleted Wayne Rooney off his account, and that is obviously because he has to, because uh show of support for his wife, you know, what, what else is he going to do? Uh, anyway, she's she's obviously been getting it in the neck all weekend, and she's looks quite sad in this picture here, she's like got all teary-eyed, teary-faced and whatever. But you've been caught, haven't you, that's why, unless it's the sun. It's either you or it's the sun. Somebody needs to uh, take take the blame or take um, responsibility. But it turns out it's not doing her any harm anyway because she's gained 49,000 extra Instagram followers. So it's going to do benefit. It's going to benefit her because she can now she's reached a, a level of followers that she can earn an extra 500 pounds per post plugging products because she's got that many followers she only has to like mention a product in there and she'll get 500 quid for it so you can't lose can you so uh, you do something like that and it actually benefits you in the end anyway so how comes 49,000 people have gone oh fuck you know I've got to get in and follow her she sounds like a right bitch I don't understand why it would encourage people to follow her but it just goes to show your name in the paper gets you fucking Get you everywhere, or even for all the wrong reasons, or for all the uh, you know, you can be the biggest idiot in the world because you're in the paper. Everyone wants to follow you and find out how you became the rich off being an idiot. Because you know, look at me, I'm trying to do it right here and now with this podcast. Never gonna work, never gonna work. I'll have to stick to my day job, bloody helping people move grand pianos. Now, that was a one off, I don't think I'll be doing it again anytime soon. Um, Great grand Jean Cox has revealed her secret to staying young, or say staying alive, in fact, not young because she's 91. Her secret to being alive at 91 is drinking two cans of Coca Cola every day. That's just, that's just, don't try this at home, anybody else, because drinking two cans of Coke every day, well, it's not really a lot, is it? But has she got her own teeth? I bet she hasn't. I haven't had a chance to read all this, but I've known people who drink. I met somebody in uh, in. I met somebody once when I was travelling, and they were addicted to coke. Addicted. They had tattoos of Coca Cola on their arm and stuff. And they drank two liters of uh, of Coca Cola a day, and their teeth were like the inside of a crunchy. The teeth were rotten. So uh, and they still carried on. So fat as well. But anyway, she seems to be. Uh, she, she's obviously got a kryptonite stomach it works for her but I don't think it's going to work for anybody else is it so uh, anyway you can ask anybody who's 91 or 100 I think my granddad's 92 or 93 what's his secret I think he has a drink every day so some people wouldn't get away with that would they you see, you see some people who are like 20 fags a day they're still doing it so uh, you know I think uh, your time some of us I've just got longevity in them, and some of us, unfortunately, don't. Uh, Frank Bruno does not carry much cash in case he gets mugged. The boxing legend says, I always carry a bit of cash because sometimes you've got to get petrol in the car, and it's good to have some coins in your wallet if you're going to a car park or something. Otherwise, he doesn't carry cash in case he gets mugged. You'd be some, you'd be some kind of fucking idiot to uh, try and mug Frank Bruno, even though he's 57, he's getting on, but for one, everybody knows who he is. I suppose there's like a lot of youngsters who are stupid and they're probably fucking... No, actually, there's probably a lot of youngsters who don't know who he is, but at the same time, he's still quite a scary, you know... You wouldn't fancy your chances against him anyway, no matter if you're mugging him or not. If you was to meet him in a pub, in a fight, 
I think you'd think it was going to lose most people. So, um, but then again, these idiots are getting braver and braver, aren't they? They seem to want to take down uh, bigger guys in some kind of, uh, you know, what's it called? Some kind of uh, uh, medal to themselves that they've done it. But uh, anyway, I still fancy my chances. Frank could be wiping them out. Um, so maybe it's best that he doesn't carry cash so he doesn't have to kick, kick the shit out of them and doesn't have to kill them. In fact, I think he's a nice guy, so he'd probably just give him the money and say, take it, uh, I'll still leave you alive from this interaction. I'll let you go, but take my money. I think he'd do that. But uh, anyway, is he still a killer? He's always, uh, he's, you know, he's always had the, the eye of the tiger. He was a nice guy, though, wasn't he? Uh, speaking of other nice guys, but weird guy, is Mr. Motivator. He's, he's basically he's basically in the paper today saying telefitness legend Mr. Motivator wants his ashes fed to mourners at his own funeral. The daytime TV icon, real name Derek Evans. Did you know that? Real name Derek Evans, Mr. Motivator, wants to mix them with fish paste and put them in sandwiches and and the rest is on another page. I've only ripped the one page out. I couldn't be bothered to get the rest. Um, I think that's his way of... I actually thought he was dead already. Mr. Motivator, where's he been since the fucking 1980s? How has he just popped up just to say that? Maybe he's dying, I don't know. But uh, he's obviously been given a bit of page time. Is he like, is he, does he do anything these days? He's been, a, been disappeared for 20 days. Is he still motivating people? I don't know, what's his secret? Anyway, if you're gonna be at uh, uh, Mr. Motivator's funeral, Looks like you're going to be eating fish paste, uh, fish paste, and Mr. Motivator sandwiches. So, uh, if I was you, I wouldn't go. Or take your own, take your own pat lunch, or something like that. <clears throat> um, Olivia Coleman visited Buckingham Palace for a recent charity event, as she came away with some useful, useful insights for her new television role as the Queen. Um, uh, what's she do? I've, I'm trying to cut this shorter. I haven't read it. Uh, I think she nicked the toilet roll. Oh, my husband stole some t some toilet roll just to say we got it from Buckingham Palace. Coleman confesses in an interview with the Sunday Times. Well, so what did you do with it? Use it and then, uh, you know what I mean? How, how short lived is that? Or have you got it folded in the in the in a drawer? What's a ship? thing to uh, keep isn't it a bit of toilet roll in the in your drawer and every time you get it out go look this is a bit of bug roll from Buckingham Palace uh, no good I actually bought some toilet roll today it was um, recycled toilet roll it was recycled I first I thought it was recycled toilet roll I thought how does that work but uh, it's actually recycled paper I think so anyway it's good that they're doing that I actually, uh, um, I think it was uh, cheaper than half than all the others, and you know, as long as it's not recycled toilet paper, not been through the toilet system, and like a fucking dried out fat burg or something, I think you're uh, they're onto a winner there. I'll be buying it again. Was it nine rolls for one pound sixty five? There you go. Anyway, that shit you shouldn't be talking about on this podcast, isn't it? Um, anyway, they shouldn't be nicking toilet roll from fucking Buckingham Palace. So uh, that'll be frowned upon by the royals. Um, where are we going to go? Where am I going with this? Uh, the plane protester who uh, we spoke about the other day, <clears throat> he's been sent... What has he been doing? Uh, the, the, the partially sighted plane, plane protester who, who grounded the plane when he's clung, clung to the top. You can see him, he's like... Hanging on the top of it like he's hanging off for the, his dear life. It's not moving, but because he was partially sighted, he thought he was going to fall off it. But there was another guy who was a priest um, who uh, who disrupted another plane. Uh, a priest was among about 50 people arrested at the airport on Thursday, and he organised a praying and sing. He started praying and singing "Amazing Grace" whilst blocking the entrance. Uh, a picture showed him lying on the ground next to another man. The clergyman from Birmingham, that's where I'm from, travelled to London with a group of Christian climate action. Even the uh, even the the priests are naughty in Birmingham. 
I'm telling you, we're, uh, um, you know, it's good for him, I think. He's, you know, it'd be hard to arrest the priest, wouldn't it? How are they going to uh, deal with that? You know what I mean? They couldn't really rough him up, could they? He's got God on his side, especially if he was a policeman that was religious. You'd have to let him go, wouldn't you? Otherwise, you'd like, you know, be either that or you'd have to go and sort of go to church and go and confess and do all that kind of business. Otherwise, you'd be hell damnation or whatever it is. Um, I don't know what I'm going on about, um, but <clears throat> anyway, I'm saying he's good. He's took part. He'd normally think they would like stay away from that, but uh, he's a brummie. That's what kind of things we do. Um, John Barrowman, the guy who used to be, was he a Doctor Who? Can't remember. I don't even know what he what he did. But John Barrowman was feeling fabulous after earning an estimated a hundred thousand pound from selfies with fans. So he was on Dancing on Ice. He was a Dancing on Ice judge, um, and he's been charging people sixty pound per photo. In in one day, he did two thousand one hundred and nineteen snaps, which added up to about one hundred twenty seven thousand. That's fucking loads of money. Who the hell? Would pay. I don't even know who he is really. He's like kind of a. It's a B list at best, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's like. And he's charging sixty pound a photo. I wouldn't even have the, the front to fucking take the money if like, I think it was such like right sixty quid, right sixty quid. You know, it's a fall in their money. Clearly, um, just goes to show that, uh, you know. People will pay for you know what they're going to do with that. That's as useless as the fucking a, a, a photo that you're going to. It's probably like, it's only on your phone as well, isn't it? It's probably not a printed out one. Otherwise, it just end up in the drawer with like your uh, Buckingham Palace toilet roll or something. Anyway, so anyway, good luck with that if you've paid sixty pound for John Barrowman's photo because he's got hundred and twenty grand, so he's laughing all the way to the bank. Um, good for him. If I could make that money, I would, I suppose. But I just find it very difficult to... It's just ripping people off, and it, basically, right to their face. But if they're stupid enough to pay... They're obviously queuing around the block if he's done it for 2,100 and something people. Anyhow, uh, a mother says she's welcomed a mini sumo wrestler into the family. It's in that the baby was uh, £13. Pounds. He's a right porker. That must have, She must have been screaming the... Uh, Screaming the house down in uh, Australia, uh, he was. But uh, so he's obviously following suit because his sister was twelve pound and the brother was <clears throat> a mere eight pounds. But eight pound was meant to be big. Uh, I think I was eight pound. I was meant to be big, so he's almost fucking double what I was. Anyway, let's say hope he doesn't stay fat. Can't be fat from from the off, can you? I didn't anyway, but uh, I had to uh, uh, I had to slim down a bit. I had to run around in my runner, my runner, you know, what's that thing on wheels that you run around in? Shed a few pounds. Um, lottery con man Edward Putman <clears throat> is secretly engaged to a woman who has gone who has gone into hiding with his stolen millions still unaccounted for. <clears throat> He was jailed for nine years this month for, for stealing. Oh, was he? He was jailed, jailed for nine years this month for stealing 2.5 million from the National Lottery. I didn't think uh, they could prove it. I thought that was the perfect crime because he, he actually faked a lottery ticket. He couldn't get nine years. That's a bit fucking... That's a bit harsh, isn't it? Nine years for... for He's faked a lottery ticket. It's not like he's held up a bank. People holding up a bank get more than bloody nine years. They get less than nine years, should I say. So he's like, just because he's done, uh, uh, got a good amount, I hoped he got away with that because that's a good scam, isn't it? Like faking a lottery ticket and getting and cashing the money and stuff. Let's hope he's hid the money and uh, he gets out after half his sentence. <clears throat> Might be worth it four and a half years for... Two and a half, two and a half million quid. Maybe it's worth the, uh, you know, worth the worth the time. I don't know. Probably not. But you you could see the, you know, you can see the draw. Some people might go for it. Anyhow, uh, shame he's been caught. He's got nine. Well, he's on the run, isn't he? 
Oh no, the woman's gone on the run with his money. So uh, she's. Is, what's her crime if she's gone on the run with the money? Is she facing nine years or. I don't know. We'll soon find out, won't she? But uh, hopefully, good for her. Get off, bury it somewhere. Um, a top gardener has told a BBC radio show how she once used a vibrator to help pollinate 32,000 tomatoes. What gave her that idea? Did she find that... Uh, uh, how did she sort of get the connection between pollinating tomatoes and what you would normally do with a, a vibrator? Uh, I don't want to talk too much about it because she does look like a middle-aged or 64-year-old gardener, so... I don't really want to discuss her antics with a vibrator, really. Maybe the tomatoes one, but not any other antics for that matter. Anyway, so she's obviously like uh, stimulating them uh, with a. There's not. Does she know that a vibrator is not the only thing that vibrate? You could use like not actually have to use a sex toy. There's probably like. Um, if there's not nothing, then there's a gap in the market there, isn't there? There's a gap in the market for a tomato massager. But uh, you can't expect everybody to start get busting out their rampant rabbits and, you know, getting down the allotment with it. But uh, anyway, do what you want with your, your sex toys. Not for me to say. But there you go. If you want uh, extra activities, you could be uh, <coughs> growing, making your tomatoes twice the size by uh, giving them a little tickle. Um, right, I'm going to finish up on a couple more things here then. Um, a widow... T no, I'm not going to say that one. David Coffin gave up his... Uh, there's a guy called David Coffin who has gave up his dead-end job to be a, wait for it, undertaker. Uh, he obviously has subliminal messages there. He's, his name's Coffin. He's obviously had jokes about his name his whole life and... Now he's been uh, he's been given a job as an undertaker, and he said his surname was an icebreaker in the interview. So uh, <coughs> there you go. He's uh, he's forever going to be just what's the word uh, explaining that name, even though he's had to do it all his life anyway. He's having to do it all the more now, won't he? So uh, anyway, good luck to him. Uh, I wouldn't want to do that job, but still, there you go. Don't get massaging them with any vibrators. That's tomatoes only, not dead bodies. You can make them look good, but I don't think it's going to be of any benefit. Uh, right, SpongeBob, SpongeBob SquarePants has normalised violent and racist colonisation, it is claimed. I can't even bother to read that. That's just bollocks. SpongeBob SquarePants is just a cartoon, a crazy cartoon. In fact, it's a cartoon that a lot of adults like, like me. Um, <clears throat> but... It's, it's not violent, it's, it's fun. And it's a cartoon, you can't call it racist, sorry. That's just fucking people looking for things. And just... Was it watchdogs? That's bloody one of the worst kind of watchdogs. Somebody, that's like... Something that one person will write into points of view with and nobody will listen because they want to go, you're joking, SpongeBob SquarePants is fucking brilliant, mate. I'm not having that. Um, right, I'm going to finish up on one more thing. If I can find it. Uh, no, I'm going to finish up on one more thing then. Okay, Eight, an 18 foot replica of Donald Trump's border wall has been scaled in a matter of seconds by novice climbers. An eight year old girl and a man returned for another attempt while juggling with one hand. So uh, they both got over the wall, one, whilst he was juggling. So that just goes to show how fucking worthwhile building that wall is. <clears throat> Granted, a lot of people might not be able to, to climb it, but it just goes to show if people... Where there's a wall, there's a way. And where there's people who are desperate for fucking a better life, they're going to get over the wall, get around it, figure out a way. And also, when there's drug dealers who... Uh, uh, are desperate for billions of pounds of American money, the wall ain't going to stop people. And uh, it isn't long enough anyway, is it? So anyway, it just goes to show an eight-year-old girl can climb the wall. So uh, keep at it. If you're from Mexico and you want to get to America, don't be put off. Just get wall climbing training and you'll be up and over in no time. Uh, right, I'm going to leave it there. 
Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Uh, my voice is a bit funny today. <clears throat> I think it's that, what's it called? Two hours of standing in the belting down the rain, uh, trying to carry a grand piano. So uh, anyway, I'll rest it off and I'll be back tomorrow fighting fit. So see you again tomorrow. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. See you again. Bye.